Enterprise Breakfast Reheated. Fire up your thinking. The emails to Ben, the text to delete. Enterprise Breakfast Scam Update. So it's really interesting. Small businesses that have had their social media accounts hacked are facing a really lengthy response process from the parent company Meta. And small businesses have lost tens of thousands of dollars to hackers who lock small businesses out of their own Accounts. So my understanding is that the government is drafting new mandatory codes that will make sure social media platforms better protect customers against scams. And this kind of dovetails into the conversation about us through the East Safety Commissioner asking Twitter not to post um, inflammatory content on the site as well. Dave Lacey joins us from ID Care in a bigger conversation. Dave, how much power does Australia have, and the Australia jurisdiction have? when it comes to talking to companies like Meta and Twitter or X? Good question, Libby. So you might recall that there was a bit of a dispute between the Australian government and these tech companies around uh, posting news Mm. and paying for those. The response from some of them was, well, you know what, we're just going to cut access. (laughs) So country of 26 million and a user base of a billion, um, uh, they probably wouldn't notice uh, if Australia was cut out. So... It is, it is, some of these companies are bigger than countries. I mean, that's how big they are. So mm. we don't have a lot of sway, um, but, but the one thing that these companies tend to respond more to is, is public discussion and public debate and news stories like the ones that you mentioned. So in actual fact, it's more the reputational aspect that influences them than... Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So... And, and the other... The, the, the customer base is so big for these companies it's really difficult for them to scale, particularly when bad things happen. So a lot of the responses that we see are robots. And if there's nuances to somebody's journey that doesn't fit a particular playbook, and we know criminals keep evolving, then you're going to get a lot of friction. Right. So when we talk about small business accounts being hacked and Meta not responding, how prevalent is this? And why do they hack them? Uh, They hack them for a few reasons. So one is uh, if you've got a lot of followers or connections on your social media accounts, that's worth something to criminals because that's a scam audience ready to be targeted by impersonating that that profile. People often put payment card details, for example, uh, on their Meta accounts. And we know once criminals have got access to the Meta account or the Facebook account, they're spending up on their own ads to then victimise others. So that's another loss that small businesses uh, have to deal with right. uh, through their payment cards. Um, how, how easy is this and how prevalent it is? There's no shadow of a doubt in terms of, of uh, social media as a channel of scamming. It is in the top three. So typically it's, it's phone, email, uh, and then social media. We get, I would say, look, I'm guessing, but I would say at least 500 people a week have some issue reported in relation to their social media platform coming into our charity. So it is very prevalent. Wow. So that's on a business sense, whereby accounts are being hacked with Meta. And from the article that I'm reading on the ABC News site, people say, it's, I think the quote was, it's a shit show. That was the name of the business owner. Mm-hmm. She said, there's no personal response. It feels like it's just an AI response and it's too hard to get any help. Yeah, and that's that's a that's a pretty common uh, response for many that are in that position. And if you're a small business that has your livelihood, all of your marketing, all of your customer contacts are through a platform, a social media account, and that's then not accessible, somebody's then hijacked it. Your business is on the line, and and that's a weekly thing for us that we get and it's very very difficult to recover because often we find that criminals once they have access to it so let's move on to the trending scam of the week kicking someone when they're down i mean that's obviously what you're talking about either using someone's own voice or photo to get their to taunt them or to cause the account to be shut down by meta because it's in breach of their rules yeah or 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 the criminals knowing, obviously, that they have access to your your Facebook account. They know your email because that's one of the account access um, information sets that they need to provide. So we find that, that the criminals will then impersonate Meta 
in that recovery process. So that people go, well, look, Meta said that they're going to send me a recovery email. I got this email and it's actually the crooks impersonating better again. Mm. And so they've the account after Meta's then sought to re-establish it. So it's this ongoing cycle. And recovery scams are a big, big thing. And it's that it's the 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 biggest thing that we see is that once people know they've been scammed, often that's the point where they're most vulnerable. Why is that? Because there's because they're so desperate to try and find, how do I undo this? What do I need to do next? And the criminals know this. And so the criminals will then go for the double tap. How do I hit Libby again? Now that Libby knows that I'm a scammer, I know I'll impersonate the organisations that Libby needs to rely upon to recover. Right. And then they hit Libby again. But how does Libby tell fact from fiction? It's very difficult. It's incredibly difficult. I mean, once upon a time, we used to say, hey, look at the email address that sent the email to you. But because criminals can spoof accounts and basically make their email look exactly like yours, it's increasingly difficult. And so the good organisations, what they'll do is they'll say, right, your your reference number, your investigation number, your number with this is, is X. And that's the only, you and I only know that. The criminals don't know that. Now, that holds true to a point, but if the criminals have access to your email accounts, which is often we find there is a relationship to a point between Facebook compromise and email compromise. Often we find that those two go together for some people, not everyone, but some people, then it makes that journey of recovery all the more harder. I reckon you've had something like 500,000 community engagements with ID care, people coming to you with issues, problems, being scammed. In all that time, how many cases do you know of where anyone's got any money back? Two. <laughs> Two. Out of all that? Two. Out of all that. Out of 10 years of doing this, I can think of two examples. And they, they are examples where the community member scammed the scammers. And they were investment frauds. So, so in those scenarios, the criminals got wind that the, the victim knew that they were being scammed. Um. And so, uh, the, the the victim then said, "Well, look, I'm not uh, look, I'm not sure. I'm not convinced. I've got a lot more money I want to invest. If you give me a little bit more money back, then maybe I might invest a bit more." Uh, and the scammers released some of their funds that way. But that is like two in thousands. Wow. We don't. We do not see it work. And tell me, in terms of people impersonating help agencies, is an alarm bell? when they request to have remote access to your device? Absolutely. Well, the first alarm bell is that they've approached you. Right. So you haven't got anything. They've contacted you. Certainly uh, the pretext to say, well, look, we can, we can help catch them. You know, we can, we, can, we can work with you to investigate these people. If we can get remote access to your device, we can help steer you. Often we find AnyDesk is the preferred software of choice for criminals when it comes to remote access scams, like that's a standout in terms of application. It used to be TeamViewer, but certainly AnyDesk is, is what they're using a lot, particularly over the last few years. Um, and, of course, you're in that state where you're desperate. You know, you're kicking yourself. You think, how, you know, I, couldn't, I can't believe I did it. I always said I wouldn't do it. I've fallen for this. How do I undo this? And, and that's just crippling for investment fraud victims in particular, where they've lost everything. I must ask you, Dave, I can't delete TeamViewer from my computer. Has someone got control of it? No, it is, it is often a difficult one to delete. You have to go into the settings in terms of your applications and delete it that way. You can't just delete the app icon on your phone or your or your device. It, it's one of those tricky software packages where it can be. <laughs> so it's weird, isn't it? It's like the one that is the one that offers the most risk is the one that's embedded. Delete. Crazy. All yeah, right, Dave. Viewer, not so much. Yeah, any desk is the one. Definitely. Any desk. Yep. All right. So the starting point is to always assume it's a scam, Dave. Unfortunately, that's the world we live oh. in now, Libby. Oh, no. What a pain in the butt. You see, these are the unintended consequences of things that could be useful. And every time we screw it up, don't we? Thanks, Dave. Great to talk to you. Dave Lacey, uh, founder, managing director of ID Care. Can I give that to you to take into your world, people, today? Assume, assume people are crooked.